Tina said our contestant's the winner. Hey, here we are with this part of the video, the part that takes up most of the video because I don't film a lot during conventions, especially at this year's Con Bravo when it was mostly just uh, game clips at this year's Throne Controllers. Oh well. But I'm sure you're all at least vaguely curious of what I got autographed and bought this time around. Right? Hopefully? First, I'm just going to quickly go over what I got autographed this year. Um, this time it was just the Runaway guys, but it was still fun to see their panels and, and to see them and all that. So, uh, yeah, so um, keeping with my tradition from the previous two years, I got Mario Party 3 signed from them. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any more Mario Party games unless I, you know, get back the GameCube ones or something like that. But, uh, but I did get something else signed from them too, and this is also another thing that they did uh, not too long ago actually on their channel, and that was Triforce Heroes. Now, um, I haven't really played much of this, and I would like to um, at least uh, play, play this with two other people maybe if they have it, but, uh, but in the meantime uh, I did enjoy their, their playthrough, and uh, so yeah. And if you're a fan of Proton John streams, then these next two games should be uh, pretty familiar. Uh, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles 2 on the Game Boy. I can talk, I swear. Uh, this is actually... Uh, I got this signed because this is actually where his intermission music comes in. So I figured, yeah, that'd be, that'd be a pretty uh, prevalent game for him to sign. And also, and because I had this as well, uh, the third Ninja Turtles game on Game Boy. And uh, the reason I got this is because uh, one, of the main, one of his main highlights of the stream was when he came across... Uh, a very infamous typo of this game, where Master Splinter literally tells the turtles to prepare for BUTTLE. I'm not kidding, that's like a real typo in the game. <laughs> so yeah, this is also a fun one to get signed to. And lastly, I just got Lukajin to sign Fax and I do because she streamed this a while ago and this is one of her uh, childhood games, and I was like, oh yeah, I have this game, I, sh I should just bring it in to have her sign it, why not? Uh, and uh, I haven't really played through much of it myself, but uh, maybe I will, especially with uh, something else that I did get per that I did purchase uh, that I will show later on in the video. All right, now we're gonna get into what I bought this year, and I bought quite a few video games. Shocking, I know. Although I did get a lot of games I was kind of looking for, such as a few Sega CD games, uh, starting with Dark Wizard. Now this is a strategy RPG for the Sega CD, and uh, yeah, it, it doesn't have the manual, but uh, believe it or not, this is actually my most complete copy that I got uh, from this convention, uh, because I'm slowly starting to realize, finally, that getting complete Sega CD games is pricey, so I'm kind of just selling for incomplete copies like this, or even just like the CDs and cases. I mean, because half of my Sega CD games are already kind of like that anyway. But I just kind of just want the games regardless. And maybe someday I'll, I'll complete them later, but... Yeah, but in the meantime, I got Dark Wizard, like I said. And this is actually an... Uh, and this is Vey, right here. This is a, an RPG for the, for the Sega CD. And finally... Uh, this was actually down in the uh, 1UP game store that was like down the street in Hamilton. Uh, this was, this is the Amazing Spider-Man vs. the Kingpin, which is a, uh, which is a fairly known uh, Sega CD game, or uh, or at least a Sega CD version of a Spider-Man game that's, that has like cutscenes and stuff, so I'm glad to at least get this and try it out. So it was good to get those to help boost my Sega CD collection, but um, in the meantime I also got uh, quite a few other games. Uh, such as Kid Icarus Uprising, which is uh, complete, even with that little, like, uh, stand thing that you put on your 3DS to help, like, control better, or at least, like, or at least to make it, make it feel a bit better, because uh, I've heard this was a really good game, I just never got around to getting it, and I do have the other two Kid Icarus games, so I figured I'd finally get the 3DS one complete, too. Uh, I've heard that the controls are a bit strenuous even with that little sand thing, so other than that I'm looking quite forward to playing this though. 
So while some of the games I did, of course, get from the usual marketplace that was at Con Bravo, uh, there was actually a bit of a special event on the Friday night. Uh, this was actually a night market of sorts, where people could actually set up spots on a table in a room and, uh, you know, people could peruse their, like, extra games and stuff that they would bring for them to, to sell. And uh, Proton John and Lukajin actually had, had a spot set up, and that's actually where I got Breath of Fire 3 from them. So, yeah, I'm, I, I do have the first two Breath of Fires, uh, but I haven't really gotten far into them, but I did see Breath of Fire 3, so, and I'm like, oh, I should, I should get this, yeah. And it was for a pretty good price, too. And speaking of Breath of Fire, I also saw at the, uh, in the market, in the regular marketplace, uh, Breath of Fire 4. Now, this doesn't have the manual, which, you know, like, like the Dark Wizard, I'm just like, you know what, I don't... It doesn't really matter. I just kind of want the game, and especially since I got essentially both of the both uh, PlayStation Breath of Fire games for uh, a pretty good price, I'd say it was worth it. So yeah, uh, definitely looking forward to eventually playing through uh, these games. Now there were a couple other games I did get during the night market. Um, they for the Sega CD was one, and another is actually a bit of a nostalgic choice for me. And that's Lego Racers for the SSD4. Now, I actually had this when I was uh, younger, and to see this, I was just like, you know what? Why not? I, you know, just just for a nice little trip down trip down memory lane, and you know, and all that. Uh, here we have Final Fantasy One for the PlayStation Portable. Now, uh, I actually do have the NES uh, version as well as the Game Boy Advance one. And actually, in the Game Boy Advance one, I remember years ago uh, getting up to the final dungeon, but I think I got lost or something, and then I never actually got to finish it. So I was actually really close to beating the first Final Fantasy one on Game Boy Advance, but I never did, unfortunately. Uh, and then uh, I would basically have to replay the whole thing in order to try and beat it again. So I, I think I lost the save, or the save file got replaced or something. I, 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 I don't remember, really. Uh, but yeah, but I decided to get this because it's like, hey, this is basically the uh, the nicest version of Final Fantasy, at least in a in a portable sense. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll play through this and finally beat uh, Final Fantasy One after all these years. And the last game I got is actually a Dreamcast game because um, I haven't gotten a Dreamcast game in my collection for quite a while. Probably not since Skies of Arcadia back a few years ago from Anime North. Unless I'm misremembering, but yeah, but basically I got a uh, Toy Commander. And uh, this has always been a Dreamcast game that I sort of know about, but never really got around to getting it for myself to try it out. But uh, but I saw it, I'm just like, you know what? I'll get it, I'll try it out, why not? And uh, like I said, I'm, I've been meaning to get more Dreamcast games that I haven't been collecting for in quite some time, so uh, glad to finally get another Dreamcast game after all these years or so. So that about does it for the games that I got, but there are still a couple little uh, things I did get that are of course still video game related. Again, big surprise, I know. Uh, starting with uh, a t-shirt that I got. And this is a Monster Hunter shirt I got. And uh, yeah, if, if you know me and my videos and stuff, uh, you know that I like the Monster Hunter, especially World. World is really good. Especially when the behemoth thing recently came out as if to date this recording. But yeah, this is uh this is good because uh you know, cause the Yeti did a whole bunch of like Monster Hunter and Monster Hunter Club shirts and stuff like that, or some, something to that effect. And uh, I'm just like, you know, I should, I should get a Monster Hunter shirt. I'm a fan of the series, why don't I have one yet? And then lo and behold, yeah, here it is. And then when I browse through the figurine vendor of the marketplace. I spotted something that definitely caught my attention, and I kind of caved in and got it. Although it wouldn't really be surprising that I got it. Uh, and that is a Rudy from Tales of Destiny figurine. Now, I this is actually the same vendor where I believe I got Sheena and Guy. So now I have yet another Tales of figurine. Which, you know, knowing, knowing me and my video series, not really shocking of course. But uh, I really like this figurine, 
And, uh, and what's nice is that she actually has two swords. She has her uh, swordian, but she also has uh, this sword as well. I, f I forget what type of sword it actually is in the game, but I'm sure it's like a just a optional equipment equipped sword you can you can have her use like a rapier or something like that. Cause that's what she tend to, tended to, to use in that game. But yeah, to, to see to see more Tales of Figurines, uh, let alone a Tales of Destiny one, yeah, I just had to, cause I'm like one of the few people that played Tales of Destiny, so <sighs> I, I I can't help it. And last but not least, this is the uh, biggest thing that I got from uh, from Com Bravo. And while it's no CDI from Hammy North, it is definitely something that I think will help me with my videos. And that's a Retron Five. Uh, this was also from the uh, the night mar the uh, night marketplace. And uh, yeah, and the price for it was significantly less than what they usually go for. I'll just say that. So I felt like I got a good deal because it wasn't really used that much. And uh, now, if you're not if you're not familiar for what uh, Retro Five is, it's a uh, it's an emulation machine that that can play all your NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, and even uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance games. And uh, actually, recently there's even a adapter you can get for this where you can play Master System. Master System card games and even Game Gear games on this thing. So to be able to play all those systems on just on one convenient on one convenient system uh, th through HD through HD uh, on HDMI that appeals to me as a uh, as a content creator that covers video games and stuff and would be a good easy way to play this. Now that's not to say that this thing is completely foolproof uh, there have been there has been some a little bit of controversy over like the open source emulators that the, that the that hyperkin apparently used for this uh, the build quality could be could be a little bit subject uh, although I did test this and it and it does work for me at least so, so far uh, and I still need to do things like update the firmware and things like that but for the most part I'm pleased with this and uh, I'm hoping to use this in order to provide uh, good quality uh, retro game footage because while I do have a um, an HD converter that can convert uh, component and S video into into HDMI signals for me to capture from with the with my HD capture device, uh, it, it it's not like it's not as good as something that is like this, especially if you do like like. Uh, composite signals from a Sega Genesis, like it's not going to look look very good even on the on, on an upscaler, which is one of the main reasons I got this because Genesis games look a lot better on this than it would on a uh, if you would if you try to like uh, capture it through that through other methods unless you do like a frame meister and SCART cables and all this other and all this other stuff. But I'm just like I don't have the money for a frame meister and that kind of stuff right now. Which is why I got this in the meantime. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm pleased to get this, and I'm hoping it'll be a, a uh, nice re nice convenient tool for me to uh, record gameplay foot gameplay footage from all of my uh, older games and such. So uh, yeah, you can look forward to some slightly nicer footage for thanks to this thing. Provided I you know. Get videos out. I, I swear I'm gonna. I swear I'm trying. Trying my best to get them out better, better and more frequently. I swear. Now, if there is only one thing that is universally not liked, it's the uh, included controller, which, while it is wireless, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's not good. It it it's not. It, it just isn't. Uh, but thankfully, you can use uh your real NES, Genesis, and Super Nintendo controllers because it does have two controller ports each for, for those. So thankfully you can just use those controllers and not this wireless abomination. Hey, so I forgot to mention something when I filmed my uh, Con Bravo recap. Uh, I actually got another pin for my camera bag. This is a Parappa Rappa pin I got. 
Uh, and unfortunately, I did lose a couple pins in the process of, of, my, of my going about Sin Con Bravo. Uh, the Devil Joe pin I got from, um, from EGLX this year, that unfortunately was gone. It, it, it just wasn't like secure enough, and I guess it just fell off. And then uh, my follow-up pin was also gone too, but then again, that was also hanging by a thread. I mean, it sucks that I lost those pins, especially the Devil Joe one, but you know, I'll, I'll probably just get some replacements maybe soon, so who knows. So yeah, that, that should be it, that, that should be everything now, unless I somehow forgot something else. And that was this year's Con Bravo. Uh, once again, had a great time. It was nice seeing uh, all the guests that I did run into and talk to and all this other stuff. And uh, I'll be there again next year. So, yeah, see you around.